he's making one billion dollar every year when other they're making around 10. One Say billion, that again. One billion dollar. You can check that. Wow. Yeah. All right, so we're here with my friend, uh, Sudi Amba. And Sudi, uh, tell us about yourself and also what you do. Yeah, uh, well, first of all, I would like to say thank you for inviting me to your platform. Um, it's really, really an honor to be here. And uh, yeah, uh, originally I am from Congo and I live here in the United Kingdom, though I am an international traveler. So I've been all around for business purposes. So what I do, I'm, uh, I'm a business consultant specifically within the Africa frontier market. Oh, wow. Okay. And how did you get into that line of, of work? I, what, what made you want to put your focus and your energy and resources into that? The thing is, it's, I mean, it came like a joke to be honest, because I'm from a business background, but in, in terms of helping investors and helping anyone from abroad to get into African market, well, I started it in 2008, that's a while ago. So I went on holiday in, uh, in Congo because I did uh, my degree in business studies here in, in the UK. So when I finished, I went uh, for a holiday and it happened that these Americans, they wanted to build 5,000 houses and they had also agricultural project in the Eastern part of Congo, specifically in Bukavu. The thing is they had an issue with a translator and it also they had an issue with the, the cultural shock. So they did not understand many things right. and it happened that I was there. And my dad uh, invited them for a dinner home. And then he said, okay, I can accommodate you for free. I've learned a lot on networking strategies and that opened a big door for me. So when we were discussing, they found myself that I have a lot of uh, knowledge in terms of um, what they wanted to do in terms of uh, the housing market, in terms of the mining market. Uh, th at that point, they were focused also on um, trade gold, you know, because Congo is is, as you know, is extremely rich in uh, natural resources. And one of them is gold. And I have local connections. Even in Ghana, I've got local connections, people that are reliable. Because the thing is, many business travelers, they always have issues with uh, local connection. Mm -hmm. They always have issues with local support. And yeah, it's good to tell people, invest, do business in Africa. Those, I mean, those, uh, those uh, needs I have come to find out that many business owners, investors, they struggle in terms of immigration, they, they struggle in terms of business registration, uh, in terms of accommodation. So you make sure that they have the best customer service, that they have the best experience in case they need accountant, they need tax uh, advisors, um, in terms they need contacts, you know. So everything that's uh, they need as business owners or as investors, I uh, take them by the hands, as I will say. Okay. Okay, great. So, Sudi, as you know, Africa, you know, uh, your country is rich in national resources. Uh, it seems like lately every, what everyone is talking about yes. is basically the next frontier of development. So what have you seen in Africa that, you know, people can invest in? Well, the thing is, it's always necessary to understand why first people are talking about Africa is the future, right? Um, the, I mean, in, in 2030 and upwards, the population of Africa is increasing. And um, in the next coming years, 40% of the world population will be in Africa. And those people, they will need basic needs really like housing like um, i mean accommodation food they will need clothes they will need electricity they will need um to communicate you know so who's gonna supply all those needs you understand that's where the terms uh, africa is the future uh came you know so those big multinational big companies foreign companies they saw the opportunity to make money 
to invest in uh, in real estate you know because the housing market cannot accommodate everybody so they, they there is a need in the housing market um the food market as well all those people they will need to eat you know uh the um they will need to drink you know those people uh, they have daily to daily expenses like medication they might need medication they might need clothing they might need electronics they might need that's why all those big companies they are trying to position themselves so in terms of the opportunities it's important to highlight that africa is not a country right? right and every country is different from the other so the opportunities that are in ghana could be different from nigeria and the opportunity in nigeria could be different from rwanda or congo or tanzania or uganda there are 54 countries in africa and every country is different in its own but let me just give you an example of some opportunities that i know because i've been in east africa um the recently uh you i mean there are a lot of cement i mean there are a lot of construction uh happening in tanzania for instance and you know most of these uh construction will require cement that's why there are many foreign companies investing in 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 uh, in, uh, in cement manufacturing yeah. you know like uh, there is one called twiga if you check uh, it's i think it's a foreign company you know they are making a lot of money even on the stock market the resolam stock market twiga is really doing well and many foreigners they invest in twiga because they're making i mean cement is almost everywhere construction is happening everywhere dangote um you know he saw that opportunity that's why also uh, dangote is there doing cement not only cement there is a big there is a big port in dar es salaam it's called the Resalam port right many many opportunities in the logistic and transport you know because rwanda uganda the congo the burundi depend on that port all the surrounding countries they depend on that port and guess what there are many many goods but few trucks few mm. few cargo trucks you know and that is a big a very lucrative business you understand mm. because yeah. the last time i checked for three day deal on a cargo truck you can charge around six thousand dollars for three days to take the the, the goods from the wrestling port to congo six thousand to eight thousand dollars you know we're talking american dollar american doll right mm -hmm. in terms of construction for instance last time i we we discussed about that because of those constructions roads constructions hotels constructions many many ha construction happening to be honest you know they need dump trucks and uh, all sort of uh, transport equipment so if you invest in those kind of businesses you'll be making a, a lot of money there i mean there are a lot of opportunities if, if i have to generalize mm. you know africa offer all sort of opportunities but you need guidance you understand right um because when we said opportunities we are talking about challenges because business is all about solving challenges it's all exactly. about business it's all about solving problems problems mm -hmm. and as you know africa we, well, every country has their own problem, but Africa, we have a lot of challenges and every challenges can be turned into an opportunity. Indeed. That's why in Ghana, there, recently, there is this lady, a Chinese lady, which is the CEO of uh, Zonda Tech. You know, and she, I actually, I actually yeah. did a video. I, I did a ah, review of that conference you and you can check it out up here if you haven't seen I'll, it. I'll, I'll check that one. It's really interesting what she mm. said. She said... She was poor in China. She came into um, in in Ghana while other journalists were complaining about challenges, about problems in uh, in Ghana. She saw the opportunity out of those problems, you know, and um, that's how she became rich in Ghana. I I, I know many African Americans they're interested in the travel and tourist business, but you have to know because there are many investors incentives that goes along with that. And Tanzania, they are doing all they can to attract investors. That's why I'm saying it's 
it's all about guidance. It's all about knowing where to invest. So Africa uh, has opportunities in everything, in technology, in house, in real estate, in uh, health, in education, transport, you know, name it, the stock market, everything, yeah, there, there is an opportunity, but you have to make sure that you have the market knowledge. You have to make sure that when I say market knowledge, is like choosing your country carefully. If you want to invest in Ghana, what are the hot products that you can sell or present in Ghana? Because we can talk about opportunities, but if you don't have customers, that business that won't mean anything. Right. You know, yeah. So yeah, uh, there are a lot of opportunities. All the challenges, if you just want to know what are the, cha- the, the, the opportunities in Africa, look at the problems, the challenges. Mm. And then look at solution. Once you get a solution, you are a millionaire. Yeah. yeah. Well, I yeah. hope it's not it's not just as simple as that because there's a lot of work that that will go into making a business prosperous in Africa. I think. So, yeah. why do you think that looking out from here that is so hard to do business in Africa? Uh, the thing is, let's start first with four important things that uh, people should know about. Number one. Um, you have to have the market knowledge. I said it before. Um, by market knowledge, I mean you have to know that Ghana market is completely different from Nigerian market, completely different from Ivory Coast market, and different from Angola market. Why I'm giving you all these examples is because uh, Africa is a continent. We have English-speaking countries. We have French-speaking countries. We have in in Angola they speak Portuguese-speaking countries. In Tanzania they speak Swahili. You language. have to have the market knowledge, so you have to understand that. That is just one example. Yeah, uh, the business environment is different. The the the, the business ethics is different. Uh, the business laws are different. You know, in one country like Rwanda, in, in, in one day you can have your business license. Uh, it's important to have the knowledge of the market. That's number one. Number two, you have to be the right person for the business. You might have the money, but that's not enough. You might have the capital, but that's not enough. You have to be the right person for that business. By the right person, what do I mean? You will need, sometimes your business might require you to have some technical skills. For instance, in the construction industry, possibly you might need some technical skills. Like if you, as a business person also, you might need business skills, like how to set up a business, how to set up a system, you know, how mm. to hire a team of people to help you with your business. That's number two. You have to be the right person. You have to have that discipline. You have to have that determination because you might have the money, but maybe after one failure, you are just, uh, you feel like quitting. You might have that determination, even if it will take one year, two years, three years, but I've got the determination to make sure that I succeed. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the capital is really necessary, but the mindset is the key. The mindset, yeah? Because uh, most of the people in our community are scared to try, mm. you know? Most of uh, the, the the people in our community, we are scared to fail. We we have that fear mentality. What right. will my friends going to say? Uh, in case I fail, in, yeah. failure is just, lear- it's just learning. It's part of business. You know I'm saying? The yeah. more you fail, the more you learn more, the more you know how to you know, improve yourself, you know? So four key things that turns out that we, uh, we find it difficult, the knowledge of the market, the, uh, um, I mean, you have to be the right person, the capital, and also uh, the mindset. Those are really, really key. But above all, you will not just be in America and then you have this business idea, this assumption that that your business idea will work. You might want to start a fashion uh, business or a restaurant because most of people want to do it. The thing is, most of people want to do either restaurant. If it's no restaurant, it's fashion business. If it's no fashion business, it's Airbnb. If it's no Airbnb, it's uh, travel 
and tourists, but understand everybody want to do it. So how are you going to make it? If everybody want to do it, you have to be, be too unique. competitive. You understand? You have to be unique in your way. And that's right. what happened with the story of what I told you, Satguru. If you check on the giants in Africa, most of the giants in the travel and tourist industry are white you know, and, um, the most of them, they will make around $10 million, you know, a year. But what made Sadhguru, who is an Indian exceptional is one of the secret people should learn. He's making $1 billion every year when other they're making around 10. One Say that again. $1 billion. You can check that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And most of his income comes from Africa. I said he started in Rwanda, but now he's an international company with a headquarter in Dubai. So people should learn, you know, should learn the tips. Why one will make $1 billion is a foreigner with a humble background, but the other one, um, other foreigners like the white community, they're making $10 million, but the locals, most of the local companies, they struggle to make even $3 million. Mm, you understand? Wow. And, uh, it's just few of them. One of them is in Kenya. It's called Bonfire Adventure. The other one is in Uganda, you know, and another one is in, 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 in Rwanda. Those are the only few that make, barely make it in travel and tourism. You know, those are the most successful one. But when you look at the giant in the travel and tourism industry, it's all about Indians and whites community people should learn why someone in america is making it in, in africa but you are there you can't make it there's secret to that yeah so i think um yeah that, that that that's it really to be honest yeah okay wow viewers i hope you you guys have been taking notes because this has been wow. kind of like a business master class of doing business in africa so i hope you this provided some value to you and sudi i want to thank you so much any final words well um yeah the final word, I just want to thank you for watching and continue to uh, support this channel. Um, yeah, and uh, if you are planning to do business in Africa, make sure you visit first. Make sure you visit first. Don't just, and go in stages. Don't just, you know, uh, spend all your money all together. You know, there's what we call test time. You have to test the market first. And then, you know, uh, make sure you have the right partners, make sure that you have the right business model, make sure that you know who are your clients, who are your customers, because that's what will make your business sustainable. And uh, if you need advice or guidance, make sure you get the um, qualitative information. Don't just assume watching YouTube or watching, checking on Google, you will know everything. Put your feet on the soil, right? Really, really, really key. Yeah. Uh, visiting, bi we call it business travel. Go visit Africa. You will be surprised of how much money you can make in Africa. Whether you want to make it um, on the ground or um, um, or abroad, this means you can make, you can, you can, you can do a physical business in Africa or an online business in Africa. Yeah. So thank you so much for, for your time. And uh, yeah, thank uh, you. Absolutely. A pleasure was all mine. So Sudi's contact information is is going to be below. Uh, he also has a YouTube channel where he shares his travels and he shares his business advice. And he has more information about establishing a business in Africa. So Check it out in the description box below. Uh, Sudi, thank you so much. Uh, it was a pleasure and an honor for you to be on my channel, on my platform. I want to thank you. Um, guys, so please like this video, share this video, because I'm sure there are other business-minded people just like you who um, you know, possibly want to look into investing in a business in Africa. So share the video. Uh, make sure you subscribe below. And I want to thank you for watching this video today, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you. Thank you. Right. My pleasure.